Hopefully that works. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the stream. What's up, Karen? What's up, Jill? Happy Valentine's Day to all the ladies. What's up, Miss Ladybug? Thank you for joining. What's up, Google user? Sheriff Bean? Hello from Ohio. Right on. Yeah, I just came back from Ohio. Uh, we got Sherry. What's up? Uh, just KJ. Um, what's up, Frank? What's up, Jacqueline? Uh, what's up, Anna? Irma Ma Art. And what's up, Lynn? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. What's up, Kim? Yeah, so um, I was going to do just Delphi, um, but looks like they have released um, a full uh, examiner's report on Brian Laundry. So I thought we would... Uh, and we'll start with that. We'll kind of we'll proofread it a little bit. I'm I'm not gonna go. There's like five pages. We'll kind of skip around on it, but get the the main stuff out. Uh, what's up, single threat? What's up, Brady? Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Um, for those who are newer to my channel, I cover cold cases, um, missing, uh, do paranormal Tuesdays, and I. Uh, with all my videos, I like to uh, to kind of give back to the community. I, sh I put missing person posters in all my videos. And so every video I do, um, before um, I upload it, I go and look and see, you know, who's currently just went missing. And so, and then I do, I do take requests. So um, my email's in the description. And so today, I've featured her once before. Let me, uh, let me pull her photo up before we get into the Brian Laundry stuff, and then we'll we'll go into the Delphi. So this is uh, Leah Brandon. She just went missing uh, two weeks ago. She was last seen in Lowland, Texas, at a friend's house. She left during the night, and her family has not heard from her since. And I've seen some videos, I don't know if it's her brother or boyfriend or something, and it's really sad because he's been kind of on Facebook um, trying to get her, you know, story out there, and it's it's just really tough to see when the family members are out there really trying, and so there's a $2,500 reward right now. She's 17 years old. 
she's in nursing school. I think she just finished or she's getting close. So, you know, it's got a bright future. So hopefully uh, someone's in that area that uh, can take a close look. So and bring her home. So I've got some new, uh, I got a new emoji. And also I've got, um, so anybody donates, I've got some, I'm hoping they work. So I've got new gifts for like uh, between 10 and $10, 2 and $10, there's like one gift that'll play. Um, between 10 and 50 is another gift that'll play. And then anything above 50, there's, so I've got like three or four different gifts that'll play. And then if anybody like subs during the channel, um, I changed it to a different GIF. Um, it's kind of funny. Um, so hopefully those are working. So I'm going to try to get, uh, now that I'm going to be going live a lot more, I'm going to try to get more, get a little better at going live and having a, a like a better, um, a better show overall. And so let me, uh, let's see, let's pull up. What's up, Jill. Thank you for tuning in. So, yeah. So, uh, let's see, I believe it's five pages. Yep. One of five. So let me scroll to the top. So I believe this came out just a couple hours ago. So, but yeah, once again, happy Valentine's to all the ladies out there. So this is from District 12 Medical Examiner, the Brian Laundry Autopsy Report. So it says included in this packet is the investigator case summary, the medical report from the scene investigation, which I'm kind of interested in, uh, laboratory report, and um, the odontologist, which I believe is the like the dentist, I believe. So, so here is his just um, so here's his full name, date of. Oh, his death. So they say he officially perished on October 20th, 2021. Uh, you got two different. So you got the medical examiner and the investigator. Uh, passed, uh, passed away on age 23. So uh, let me just proofread this real quick. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start reading this first page. And then, uh, like I said, I'm not going to go through everything, all five pages, but we'll just kind of go into the, the good stuff if there's something new that we haven't heard. So on October 20 at uh, 0930 hours, so that's uh, 930 in the morning, I was contacted by Sergeant uh, Fortuno from Northport Police Department in reference to apparent human skeletal remains. The remains were discovered in the Carlton Reserve uh, located in, yeah. Uh, so the sergeant advised that a massive search had been ongoing in the Carlton Reserve for several, re several weeks by multiple agencies for a 23 year old brain laundry. Um, so search groups found a backpack and shoes that were identified as belongings to brain laundry. Interesting. So we knew about the backpack. The shoes is, uh, I believe that's new. The personal belongings were surrounded by apparent, apparent skeleton human remains that were scattered on top of the dirt ground. I was informed the evidence respond team from the FBI, along with cadaver and electronic detection dogs, were responding to the scene to assist in locating additional human remains. So, what's up, Biggie? So I contacted Dr. Vega um, and just a bunch of different people at 1245, same day, I was contacted by Detective Keller from the North Port, who advised that he was the lead investigator for their agency. The apparent human remains were located, and so it gives a, a longitude and latitude of where they found the remains at, which was within the Carlton Reserve, it says. So... Um, at 1400 hours, same date, uh, then they contact the odontologist, Dr. Nancy, request um, a consultation on the same day. Oh, for the next day, the 21st. At 1600 hours, same day, um, he contacts the medical examiner 
And so it looks like he just kind of contacts all the different professionals to come out and examine. So, all right, so we're on page two of five. Let me just kind of proofread this. So make sure we just get, in, get to the good stuff. And so da, 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 da. Okay, so at, at 1,700 hours, same day, so October 20th, uh, so you got the, the investigators are all on the scene. We were transported to the location of the apparent human remains. Upon ar arrival, we met with Carrie Harvey, team leader of FBI. Uh, they walked us through the scene. Harvey informed us that the search area, search area was previously under approximate, approximate three feet of water, which was indicated by the water line upon the surrounding trees. So what they're saying is this, the trees were kind of so kind of just like how rocks, you know, you can always tell when there used to be like a lake or an ocean, they have these, you know, rings or whatever, different colors. So I guess from the trees that they could tell that it was like three feet at one point. I know some people don't believe that, but this is what it says. So uh, let me get back to where I was at here. Da, 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 da. So the search area was divided into a main scene and a secondary scene. So it sounds like there's two scenes. Both scenes were marked with orange flags that indicated apparent human or animal remains with red flags and indicated personal effects. I photographed the scene and observed with the digital camera. So, da, 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 da. So 1730 hours, so it's getting, it's 530 now, it's the same day. Uh, another doctor arrived on scene, examined the skeleton, skeletal remains. Uh, the scene was north of the Maikahachi Creek envi Environmental Park, um, west of the Big Sleuth Canal. The scene included trees and overgrown vegetation that total exposure to the outside elements. Um... The skeleton remains and personal effects were in plain sight and scattered upon the dirt ground. Okay, so here's here's the good part, guys, right here. So the main scene contained human remains that included a right and left scalpula, a right humerus, a left and right femur, two tibulas, two fibulas, two clavicles, two pelvises, one right ulna, Olna, I hope I said that right. One right radius, a sacrum, multiple ribs, multiple skull fragments, along with the maxilla and mandible, and approximately 25 vertebrae, lumbar, so that's like the spine, confirmed the remains in this area to be human. So there was way more than just a skull found. I mean, that sounds like a whole body to me. That is crazy. That is completely new. Um, we've only known about a partial skull, you know. They're saying there's pretty much a whole skeleton here from the looks of it. Um, I, I'm sorry I can't zoom in right now because I'm on a on the thing that I'm on. But that is interesting. What do you guys think? Does that change anybody that thought uh, he's still alive? Does that change anything? What's up, Karen? What's up, Anna? What do you guys think about that information? That that's crazy. I, it makes me wonder why they had to hold on to that information, though. Uh, Miss Lee, Brian Laundry is still alive. Don't come for me, okay? I know it's still lobby live. You still think? You know, let's do a poll. Let's do a poll. Uh, do you think Brian Laundry is still? Alive. Oops. Alive. After this report. Is that right? Uh, oops. I missed uh, you in there, laundry. Okay. I'm going to. Miss Ladybug says, How many teeth? Um, two. So it just says, Let me go back to it. So here's the main. Oh, oh that looks, uh, it doesn't. I'm going to do a short video after I do this live to kind of like break down everything that they found. So there'll also be like a, a live show or not a live show, uh, a short upload later tonight for like all the main information. So I will definitely be doing that. 
So, yeah, it doesn't say teeth though. But let's uh, let's finish. There's still some more. So, the main scene also contained personal effects that included a pair of green shorts, green belt, two slip-on shoes, a backpack, a backpack with unknown contents, a white metal ring, and an unknown type of handgun snub nose revolver. So there was a revolver found at the scene. I think we found that out last time. But a lot of new information. Green shorts, green belt. The sh excuse me, the shoes. So let's just see what the poll says right now. So uh, so 29 votes so far, about 50-50. Okay. I said, be be polite for those that do think he's still alive. I, you know, there's still a lot of people that still think he's alive. You know, so got to be respectful. Um, I I personally think he was dead. I I always kind of called it on my channel. I always kind of felt like he was out there, um, even though I did videos, you know, on other different theories. I always kind of felt like just because I felt like there would have been a sighting just with how much coverage. It got. I just really felt like we would have seen him. So, but um, sleuth mom has to come in quickly. But of course, Brian Laundry is still alive. I said, I know. Biggie says seriously, fifty fifty. I know it's it's crazy. A lot of people still think he's alive. It's. Um, I know Biggie says whose remains would they be? Yeah, that's a that's a good argument. But a lot of people are not convinced. So. All right, let's see what else is in here because this is there's a lot. Okay, so the secondary scene, so there's a, so there was a main scene where all these bones and everything were found, but there was a secondary scene, and it looks like they've got some stuff in here. This is gonna this is big. Oh, thanks, Just KJ. They are saying, oh, did the video pop up? I'm dying to see. Hold on, I gotta see real quick. The video popped up real quick. Thanks, Just K. Uh, just KJ, that's awesome. Thanks, buddy. Um, they're saying they stayed together three. Uh, they're saying they stayed together in three H two O. Three inch. Oh yeah, three inch water. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, they said it's kind of scattered scenes from what it sounds like. Like I said, I'm gonna do another video to really kind of like break down everything that it says. I'm just curious. Did a video pop up when you donated? Can you put a one in the chat if a video popped up of uh, from that donation? I didn't see it pop up on here. So I'm hoping that works. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to go more into this. So the secondary scene. Oh, it did. Okay. So the secondary scene contains skeletal and skeletal animal remains. So there's animal remains with a handwritten half note and a hat with a logo Moab Co Coffee Roasters. Interesting. So the secondary scene had s some animal remains, which, you know, I'm sure is kind of normal in that area. But a handwritten half note and a hat with a logo that says Moab Coffee Roasters. And Moab is the town that they went to. Um, that's here in uh, Utah. So I was informed that a dry bag was located that contained a journal along with a wooden box. Oh, so that's what that was. So along with a wooden box that contained a small notebook and a photographic picture of Brian Laundry, I was advised that there was additional photographic pictures, but the contents were undisclosed to me at that time. Oh, wow. Oh, it's getting to the teeth, guys. Uh, this next part actually talks about the teeth. So interesting. Wow. Remember in that picture where they're holding the bag? Let me pull that up real quick while we're... That is interesting. Uh, let's see. Brian Laundry's parents. I think this should pop up. So, yes, this bag. Let's see. Is there a better picture of that bag? Remember how there's like a... Yeah, here it is right here. Oh, there's even a better one. Let me... 
Uh, oh, let me go back one. Hold on, guys. One second here. Yes, yeah, so this picture right here. Let me um, pull this up. So remember how it's, people were saying it looked like a box right here? I think that's what's in here is a wood box. Because people had kind of noticed they really zoomed in, and it did. They, they, a lot of people thought it was kind of like a, a like a gun box. So I think that must be what that is in that bag. That is interesting. So what's up, Lisa? Welcome to the stream. Um, okay, so now we're gonna get to the teeth. So at twenty hundred hours, which is eight. Uh, minus 12, 8 p.m. I believe that's 8 p.m. now. So 8 p.m., same day. All personal, all personnel from the medical examiner cleared the scene. Um, the investigator transported skeleton human remains that included cranial bones, the maxilla with existing teeth, and the mandible with existing teeth. So the bottom and top jaw that were processed by the evidence response team of the FBI to the Sarasota Medical Examiner Facility for potential ID pro, uh, purposes. The remains were logged into the morgue at 22:21 hours um, and same date, so real late in the day now. So they're saying that both uh, both jaws are they had existing teeth in them. Interesting. Uh, Kim says the notebook was in a dry bag that would have kept it more preserved. Yeah, that's I think that's kind of what they're saying. That's what kind of kept it um, the contents, and that's what dry bags are for. They're they're supposed to be raw, uh, waterproof. For those who are not familiar with dry bags, that's kind of why they have them. And so you bring those out for you know when you go camping and stuff, and you kind of keep important s stuff in there that if it were to get wet. So, um, yeah, so it's supposed to be kind of, most of them are uh, pretty good at being waterproof. So, KJ says, still no uh, flanges. Uh, oh, God, I don't know if I said that right. Phalanges. Uh, April says, so he walked out in the middle of the water and shot himself. So what they're saying, April, is when he went out there, there was no water. And then the rain season came in shortly after he'd shot himself. And then you got a couple weeks with a bunch of rain. And then then they start looking for him. But now that area is underwater. And then so now, you know, you go a month down the road. Then it's the water recedes. And then they go back out there. And, um, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the story. Um, so there's still some more. So, um. Let's see. Uh, so we read that. We read that. And so they talk about the, the odontologist um, kind of going out. or uh, So now they've brought all the, the evidence in. And so now the, all these different medical examiners are now examining, you know, uh, you got the dentist checking out the, the teeth. And so this is on October 21st, so the next day. So at 9.06 a.m., I contacted Udeshi from uh, Saville Family Dentistry. So this is um, – and – oh, I just want to see if this pops up real quick. Let me just see real quick. I got a notification. I want to see if this video plays real quick. I'm hoping it does. If not, I get it. I, I like said I I set up some gifts for um, when people subscribe and it's supposed to pop up. I'm just kind of keeping an eye on it because, like I said, I'm still new to this live stuff and I'm tr trying to set it up so it's more interactive for everybody. But um, Lama, yes, okay, it did pop up. All right, sweet, awesome. I'm so excited. It's awesome. Okay, so I apologize. All right, so going back to where we were at. So it looks like they've got, they're just bringing out different, um, so they're taking dental records, they're taking um, x rays of the, you know, the, let's see, for the teeth and everything. Then it says at 10 10 hours, same day, I was contacted. They believe they located additional bones from the deceased left arm bones with them at the main scene. So the next day, 
they found more bones, and apparently it's from the left arm from the the main scene. Because remember, there's two two scenes. You know, there's the main scene with all the bones, and uh, yeah, it's the llama. I thought, yeah, I thought it kind of bring a little humor because we're always talking about you know such so bad stuff. I thought it kind of make it fun. Um, <laughs> So, okay, so now, um, so now it looks like uh, more people are coming back to the scene. So at 1,300 hours, investigator Andres uh, and his buddy, they arrive back on the scene. Um, now they're walking through the scene. You got more people coming to the scene. Um, they get in contact. Evidence response team advised that the main scene was divided into three zones. Um, were designed for sifting purposes. So now it looks like they're sifting through the dirt and everything to make sure they've, you know, have gotten everything and search for additional human remains. Uh, zone one contained remains of the upper toes, upper torso, upper extremities, and head. Zone two contained remains of the lower vertebrae and sacrum. And zone three contained remains of the left arm bones. Interesting. So it looks like Zone 3 was kind of a new zone that they didn't really uh, search well the first time because that's where they found on the second day is the left arm bones. So um, so at 1,600 hours, um, they request to remove the remains that they found that day now. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. At 1,620 hours, same day. Um, uh, forensic. So, <clears throat> an odontologist, Dr. Nancy Havens, positively identified the human remains. So, the next day is when the dentist, Dr. Nancy Havens, positively identified the remains as to be Brian Laundry. Uh, through comparison of x dental X rays and um, post mortem radiographs known to his dental records. Uh, oh, I'm seeing uh, here on the stream channel at your choice under guidance of parental guardians. Okay. Yes, we are. Um, we are talking about remains, so please. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Karen. Okay, so now at 1625, same day, a projectile was located. A projectile was located. Near Zone 2 of the main scene, evidence recovery team of investigation by utilizing a medical detector. A projectile was located near Zone 2 of the main scene. Are they talking about the gun? What do you, what do you guys think that means? A projectile was located near Zone 2 of the main scene. What do you guys think? You think that's a projectile? What do you think? Oh, a bullet? Maybe a bullet? A slug? Maybe that's what they found? Yeah, a bullet. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, guys. You guys are so smart. Um, yeah. Okay, so they found a bullet. Um, all additional human and animal remains, along with personal effects, were collected, inventoried, and turned over to the FBI. Um, and they got reference numbers. Da, 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 da. Okay, let's just see here. Okay, nothing important there. And they just now they're clearing the scene. This is still October. Okay, so it's still October twenty first. Um, okay, so they're just clearing the scene. Um, it's getting late on the twenty first. And now, okay, so now they're going to do um, examination of the bigger skeletons, uh, the skeletal remains, on the 22nd. So now, now it's, the, so they've already identified Brian through the jaw and everything. So now they're going to go through all the, the you know, the big skeletal, uh, skeletal remains. And Christine Demon. Of course, he's still alive. Yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Before I get into that, um, do you think Brown's Line is still alive after this report? So, a hundred people have voted. 
So it's now it's kind of gone a little. A little more people are thinking he's um, dead. Yeah. So <laughs> you guys like the llama? I know. I love the llama. I love that stare. It's funny. So so it's now it's about thirty seventy. That's interesting though. So I'm gonna end the poll there though. So there's still a good portion of people that still think he's alive. All right, let's. Um, so we're in page four or five right now. So let's let's see if there's anything interesting in here. So so now it's the next day. Um, so it's the twenty second. So at nine a.m. Uh, so we got Doctor Vegas. Got a couple of doctors. Um, and they're doing it. Okay, so they're basically doing an inventory and photographing the skeletal remains. And da, 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 da. and then they transport the remains to a particular office. Like I said, I'm just kind of proofreading it and going over all the good stuff. I hate to just read everything out and like drag everything out. Um, da, 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 da. Doctor reports, sister deceased. Hiking did not return. 17th to see the report during this time period reigns several. Okay, so this is interesting. So on September, let me go back to it. Okay, so this is what you guys were kind of wondering about. So Keller informed us that the deceased was last known alive on September 13 when he left his residence to go hiking in the Carlton Reserve. But the deceased did not return home. On September 14, the deceased vehicle was located in the parking lot of the Carlton Reserve. On September 17th, the deceased was reported to the Northport Department. So on, so he went into the reserve on the 13th. Four days later, the parents say, hey, he hasn't came back and reported him missing. During this time, during this time, it rained for several days, which caused portions of the Carlton Reserve to be flooded. On October 7th, so now that's 17, that's about three weeks, the flooding receded to the point where the Carlton Reserve was hikeable again. On October 26, I contacted the deceased parents of Chris, Christopher and Roberta. Explain that the medical examiners... Okay, so now on October 6, 26, that is now six days after they found the remains. And they... Uh, I uh, directed Mr. and Mrs. Laundries to contact the Northport Police Department and the FBI for further information regards to the autopsy results. So basically now they're telling the parents of uh, Brian to... Call you know call in because they have new information with uh, what they found in the re um, in the uh, Carlton Reserve, and now they're being notified that this is their son, and I think they already knew because you know they found the notebook and some of his belongings that first day. So Bob Williams says uh, it's a swamp in Florida. There are thousands, probably thousands of bullets out there. Pro yeah, I, yeah. Maybe I don't. I don't know. Uh, do they go hunting a lot in the Carlton Reserve? I don't know much about the the reserve itself, but um, it's a, yeah, it's possible, definitely possible. Scottish Ray, I think we're gonna say that's how I feel. Scottish Ray, I I do think it's you know I think especially especially now that they're saying that you know because I, I get it, if there was just a skull, I could definitely see how a lot of people were not especially how the parents found him. You know, the parents go out there and then all of a sudden the remains are found. So I, I, I could understand how that really seems fishy. You got you got them spending a quarter of a million dollars every day out there searching in the reserve and not come up with anything. And then, you know, they spend a month out there and then the parents go out there in less than a half an hour find the remains. It is, um, it is fishy. But now we know that it wasn't just a skull. There are... There's the whole skeleton, you know, it's just, it's everything just about, sounds like. So, which is weird. I don't know why, I don't understand, you know, because they know people are probably, you know, concerned about this. Why not just, why not just release it? I mean, you can talk about the skull. I understand until you've identified the body, you know, they got to kind of keep it under wraps. But now that they, you know, they say, okay, this is Brian Laundry. Why not just say that, 
you know, I don't know. So let's see. Let's see if there's anything else. Oh, okay. So now they talk about the firearm. So at 1326 hours, this is um, on the 26th. Um, I contacted Detective Keller, who advised the lead agent, Bush, from FBI, notified him that the firearm collected at the scene was evaluated. The firearm was a European American Arms 38 Special, a 357 Magnum, other side of barrel. Okay, so it said a 38 special on the barrel, and then on the other side of the barrel, it said a 357 Magnum. So I, I'm no gun expert, so for those who probably know guns, probably understand that better. But So apparently it's a, a European American Arms 38 special. Based upon the markings and appearance, the firearm was a Windicator revolver. The cylinder contained two live rounds and one spent round of ammunition. So he had three bullets is what I'm understanding. Because there was two live rounds in it, one was spent. So they had three bullets, one was spent, two more were in it. Oh, I got you. Thanks, Tex. Cut. Yeah, like I said, I'm not, I am not really a, a big fan of guns. Just... I'm, I've always been kind of accident prone, so, yeah. Yeah, BB, yeah, we're going to go over the Delphi a little bit here in just a minute. It was just we had, uh, you know, this kind of Brian Laundry autopsy report come out, and it, it's big. This is big news. I mean, like I said, I, I just, I'm still surprised they would need to keep all the other stuff um, hidden. Um, but I guess that's, that is what it is. So uh, let's see if there's anything else. So they talk about photographing the remains. Um, let's see. Uh, personnel. Two sections of a femur bone and a tooth were retained for DNA analysis. They were transported to the Pinellas Forensic Laboratory. So now they're saying that not only did they check the dental records to what they found in the, you know, in the, in the skull, in the jaw and stuff, in the teeth. So they, they confirmed the dental records and matched them. Now they're saying that they took DNA from a femur bone and a tooth, a molar, and then did DNA analysis and so confirmed it. So that's that's confirming two different uh, ways that that's Brian Laundry. So on November 19, 13, 13 hours, I received a laboratory report, DNA analysis. Um, da, 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 da. The notification was a confirmation of the identity of human skeleton remains on this case. The remains were identified for 23-year-old white male Brian Christopher Laundry. And the DNA analysis, Beth Orderman signed it. So, and so um, that is it. That is, that's, that's big news. But, uh, so... That is what that is. Very interesting, though. Um, like I said, I'll, I will do a video to kind of go over. If you guys just tuned in, um, I will definitely go over all the all the main details of that report for sure. So um, let me just see what you guys are saying. One hundred percent, they knew where he was going and why. That's why they had the last camp out there together. Then when he got in the car, they knew he wasn't coming out of there. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it's really strange that they did do that camping trip in Fort DeSoto. You know, that's, I, that's, I, I don't know. It's odd behavior, to be honest. You know, especially they're. You know, they got the parents of the Petitos calling in and, you know, asking, hey, you know, where's where's our daughter? We heard your son came home, you know, and the van's here. Where <laughs> They're out there camping. Um, it's tough. But, but yeah, I, I feel like it's, I think that's definitely a confirmation that that is, uh, that is Brian. So, but now we kind of know what was in this bag. So there was a, a wooden box, uh, a half-written note, uh, plus the notebook. 
So I wonder if he took a page out of the notebook and that was like part of it, maybe. So, yeah, I agree, man, mom. Yeah, his parents knew. But they did say, um, you know, the parents of Petito said, even though this investigation is done, in a sense, they said that they're still, they're, they're not done. So whatever, take that, you know, for what it is. So maybe who knows, a civil suit down the road. So, <clears throat> awesome. So thank you guys for tuning in. Happy Valentine's Day to the ladies. Um, so let's get over, let's shoot over to the Delphi case. And um, let me show the missing one more time. Now we got a lot more people in here. So, as you guys, for some of you that are new to my channel, I, uh, I do a little bit of everything, and then I add a missing person poster to my videos, uh, just to kind of give back. So, this is Leah Brandon uh, from Lowling, Texas, and she was last seen two weeks ago. She is 17 years old, brown, brown hair and brown eyes. Um, she left during the night, and her family has not heard from her since. So... You guys around in that area, please take a close look. Um, there's a $2,500 uh, $2, reward for that information. April says they wanted to make sure he was done by the time he was found. Make sure he was done by the time he was found. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Chris is doing a great, great. Oh, thank you, Christy B. Great job. And came a long way. Yeah. Um, you know, my channel kind of exploded with the Gabby Petito case. And then after it kind of died down, so did my my channel. Um, but with the Delphi and um, you guys are just digging the live shows. So um, I appreciate it. I, I wouldn't be here without you guys. So. so going on to the Delphi case. Uh, here's a just uh, I thought I'd post this up real quick before we get into it. So. Libby, um, Libby's sister, Kelsey German, she tends to, um, you know, she'll find like old photos of her sister, Libby, um, that she hasn't posted and like kind of post them to kind of keep her memory alive. So, so here's a picture she uh, posted a couple days ago. Yeah. Yep. I agree. BBE could have been avoided for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Michelle, for becoming a member. I'm sorry, I forgot to shout you out. Yeah, and happy Valentine's Day to you, Michelle. Thank you so much. So, all right. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Bob. All right. So, uh, let me go over my notes for a little bit. So, what we got for today. Oh, man, I, did, I wasn't expecting that uh, Brian Laundry thing. So, we'll kind of have to... Go a little quicker here because I, I try not to go too long because I, you know, for people that want to rewatch the show, I try not to uh, do more than an hour and a half approximately. So just to kind of, yeah. Uh, he looks like he's potentially going to whip. Uh, no, I don't know what you just said. Anyway. Oh, I don't, I don't, yeah. What's up, Lipsha? Anyway. Oh, I don't know which person you're talking about. So, um, so let's go. So they had the HLN special, and it was very, very lackluster. Um, I think most people would agree. It was kind of like, eh. They had, they released, um, Yeah, I know, Christy B. I agree. It's kind of funny that Brian thing came in on Valentine's Day. I agree. Um, so weird. Yeah, why couldn't they release that stuff earlier? I, I, I don't know. I, I get it. Like, reports take time, but just why? Yes, I am. I am I am making that video. Um, so, I, yeah, we will have a Paranormal Tuesday for sure. So, I'm just going to play uh, just a little bit. Um of the HLN special. Um, they said there was just a few few new things, but really it was nothing big. And I was going to play the Keegan Klein's voice again because you guys like were digging that. And I thought I'd play the 
down the hill and just so you guys can hear it one more time and then after that we will do uh just the quick little interview where he says the killer could be in this room and then i've got the pictures i've got i collected as much as i could the pictures from that um press conference and so uh where they took pictures of who was in the audience they're not the best but i thought we could like kind of go over them you know that'd be kind of fun to just see if we could spot anybody you know so this bridge in broad daylight we also have an hln okay so also really okay so here's the so there was three pieces of new information that's right susan this document is more than 10 pages long and it outlines a lot of information that the fbi knew back in oh yeah i don't think klein is bridge guy no but um when i played the video a lot of people thought his voice sounded like it and i know i bridge guy i don't think yeah he's kind of too heavy set to be bridge guy but if it was his father and the only reason i bring that up is because i sound a lot like my father especially when i heard hit a certain age like i'd call people i knew and they'd be like they'd say my dad's name thinking it was me or thinking it was him it was me and so could it be that him and his dad kind of had the same voice so that's why i was going to play it so team about the murders and in the document that we exclusively obtained we learned that the video what's up kevin what's up jason that police have released two still images of and have also released a one and a half second clip of the man walking on the bridge that video is 43 seconds long one thing investigators will not comment on is whether there are other videos on libby's phone that show that man or the encounter yeah, so that's weird why she mentions other videos. It, it kind of makes me wonder if... I don't think there is, but it's just interesting since she brings that up, that there could be other videos. So I'm just going to quickly scan through this real quick, and then we'll get to his little thing, because like I said, we are kind of been kind of crunching for time here. Yeah, I agree, Atonement. You know, it could be... Um, yeah, it was. His Vegas posts are interesting. Like, the way he chose the date, February 13th, is, is a little fishy. It's definitely a little fishy. Video. What does that say to you? Okay. So, and this is Paul Holes. And so I've gone over him, but those are kind of newer. He, him and Barbara, this other gal, they got together and kind of were part of the team that caught Golden State Killer through DNA analysis. So it's really interesting that they kind of brought him along. So they kind of talk about how they took a sample of Keegan Klein's hair. And a lot of people think, if they took a piece of his hair, does that mean maybe they could have a hair sample of the killer? And it might not be a complete hair, but they do have something. But I believe likely. So, um, talk about that. Let me see. I can't. I can't play all this because I don't want to steal their stuff. So, um, I'm gonna get to the interview here, guys. Sorry, I had to record this. So. Talks about the one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, here we go. 2016 and 2017. And then I'm going to talk about the Anthony Schatz account because there's a lot of people that feel like the Anthony Schatz account um, looks like the young photo. But I, I just want to bring up an argument of why now I don't think that is. So. And they asked for anyone who interacted with that profile to come forward. But more than a year ago, then 26-year-old Kegan Klein admitted to investigators that he was behind the mm. fake profile and that he used it to ask young girls for nude pictures and videos. Tell me about Anthony Schatz. Why did you create that profile? I don't, I don't really know. I was just lonely, you know what I mean? Just, oh, sorry. People. I don't know why I did it really. And were you ever trying to meet these girls in real life that you were talking no. to? No, never. Just a now, do keep in mind that when they're on the phone like that, that could alter his voice a little bit, like, you know, through those kind of phones. I mean, I'm sure it's pretty darn close, but I'm sure it could alter, you know, the range of the voice. So it may not be the best accurate, you know. And like I said, we, we don't think, you know, really Keegan himself could be it. Just um, we've known from people that have kind of come forward and said they've known him when he was younger or kind of during the, around that time that he, you know, was still, he's been basically the same size for most of his life. 
11 days after the murder adult life Halloween, i guess task force investigators served a search warrant on the home that kegan shared with his dad at the time the fbi yeah. told the lafayette journal and courier they found nothing to indicate a connection to the delphi case kegan's electronics were confiscated then but he wasn't arrested until three years later he's now facing 30 counts of child pornography and child solicitation in miami county indiana unrelated to the Delphi murders. He says, though, that Indiana State Police told him Anthony Schatz had been communicating with Libby before her murder. So why do you think investigators are putting so much focus on you right now? I have not a clue. Because they, I think it's because they said I was the last person to talk to her, is what they've told me. And then she shows up at the bridge and they're abducted and later found dead. And that was not you? No, 100% not. Keegan says he has no memory or knowledge of communicating with Libby, and investigators haven't confirmed if what he says is true. Do you think you're going to be charged with anything related to Abby and Libby's murder? No, no, I don't. So they haven't, the state police haven't threatened that? No, no. Yeah, and Susan, we I know. I, a lot of you guys think that. Like I said, when I played this, uh, yes, no, not yesterday, the day before, because it was Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah, you guys were like, oh, that's him. Um, so let me play you the audio, and then we'll play him. I, like I said, I don't I, I don't think it could be Keegan Klein. But like I said, I sound almost ex real close to my father. And so... That could be that chance that uh, that's the same thing. So let me just give me one second, guys. I'm going to pull up. I, I have a recording of the Down the Hill, but um, it's it's kind of shoddy. So I'm going to play this other one that I think is a lot better. So give me one second here. So the audio is in this one here. I think this has got the better audio in it. This is a nice little website. This is uh, Actus Reus. I don't know if I pronounced that right. Okay, so here it is. So I'm going to play it, guys, down the hill. And then let me, uh, I got so many windows open. Let me pull this up so I can uh, just kind of play it back to back real quick so that you can kind of hear both voices here. Let me turn that up a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna play it one more time. Sorry, it was halfway, so I'm gonna I'm gonna play it one more time because it wasn't really that loud. Anthony shots. Why did you create that profile? I don't. I don't really know. trying to meet these girls in real life that you were talking no. to? No, never. Just a lot. Mm. And I know you hear them back to back. I don't know. Uh, Tahila. Uh, Tahili? I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, that is the same voice. <laughs> yeah, you know there. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I agree, Jit. Yeah. I think it kind of sounds like a, maybe like a smoker, maybe, but yeah, it sounds older, a little deeper, um, voices older, possibly dead, yeah, yeah, same tone of calmness, okay, sounds like older male, yeah, it's interesting though, it's interesting, uh, so the twin dialect, phone, Big Mac, fries dialect, Klein is more Big Mac and fries dialect, THD. Uh, that's an interesting way to atonement. Um, oops. Uh, older guy was on the bridge. His compass was waiting down the hill, in my opinion. Okay. April thinks there's two people. What's up, Pendulum Queen? More authority. Um, let me see. He could be changing his voice in the interview. Mm, yeah. Like I said, I'm sure his voice is slightly different. Because you got to remember, um, he's in the jail cell. 
you know, there's always whatever room you're in can kind of actually um, shift the tone of your voice, you know, the echoes. There's always, you know, there's always kind of variables in um, audio, you know. So we we do got to, yeah, the phones are junk. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, KJ. So, but it is interesting. Uh, video thumbnail. Okay, Cindy. Yeah, I'm gonna get into that. Like I said, so I thought it'd be kind of fun. I went over. I've got about 15 photos, and um, yeah. So I got about 15 photos of the conference where they're like taking pictures of the people that there were there. A lot of them are not the best, but I thought it'd be kind of interesting to just kind of see if any. You know, I'll just kind of label each person like number, and if you guys see like one. Then we'll kind of look at it, zoom in. So, um, one thing I do want to point out, because I know a lot of people really, um, pull this up real quick here, guys. Give me just a second. So, let me shift that over. So, just to kind of go over the sketches one more time. So, the sketch, this sketch here is a combination of two things. It's a combination of an eyewitness and the film itself. So keep that in mind. Now, of course, this was that came out first. And but also this was also to made to look like a certain suspect. Now, what could have happened between 2017 and 2019 before they hit the reset? Is that they had found somebody that resembled this guy that they were trying to, they had their eye on. He got arrested, and sadly, it turned out not to be the guy. You know, he had committed a crime. He kind of fit the profile, but sadly, he's not it. So now, now they got to hit the reset button. It's been a couple of years. So now we got the second sketch, which actually then we find out is really the original sketch. So this is really the first sketch. And, but people think, I know a lot of people have been saying this looks like the Anthony Schatz profile. But if you really think about it, this is supposed to be an eyewitness sketch. So would it really make sense if they're trying to describe the Anthony Schatz model? Because clearly the model wasn't out here that day. He's in Alaska. So, um, and if they were trying to describe that, why not just say, oh, well, here's the pic right here. You know, and show the Anthony Schatz account, and why don't they just show his photo? You know what I mean? So I, I just wanted to kind of bring that argument to the people that think this is, looks like the Anthony Schatz account. But you got to think this is an eyewitness, and we know that the model himself that it looks like is from like Alaska. He's a police officer, so, you know, so he he was nowhere near Delphi. I don't know exactly where he was during that time, but. I don't think it was a Delphi. So I just wanted to bring up that argument because I know a lot of people were kind of thinking, because it, you know, the this, this sketch does kind of, could, I don't know, it's kind of vague. So, <clears throat> but, so another theory is this is kind of a combination. So it could be possible that there was two eyewitnesses one was a younger eyewitness, because we know teens went out there. This was kind of like a teen hideout to go out to this place here. So you got one one witness that's a younger witness that was kind of maybe, you know, Libby teenage years that might describe a certain individual one way. And then you've got an older person who was an eyewitness who both are describing the same person. But you're going to end up with two different sketches because, you know, a younger person trying to describe an older person might, you know, get the age range wrong. And vice versa with someone older describing someone younger, they might get the age range wrong a little bit. Does that make sense? So this is kind of really a combination. And even the mother of, I think Abby, said that like somebody had combined these two photos and it really is kind of like the same person. So, but yeah, so that's that's how I'm kind of viewing the sketches. Is it's really it's just two different eyewitnesses from different age range. And, you know, they just kind of got different, um, 
you know, sketches out of it. So let me know what you guys think. That sounds uh, something you guys get behind on that. Uh, let's see. Get you saying, yeah. So that's that's how I, I kind of, you know, that's how I kind of think of it. Yeah. Well, you know, Atonement, he says it comes second. So they don't say forget it, but he says it comes secondary to the other one now. So he literally says, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll actually play it because we're going to get into it here in just a minute. But he does say it comes secondary. So I think if they were going to say, you know, you know, get rid of it. I think part of the reason is because it does just look like bridge guy anyway. Um, so, um, I was going to play. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Find the video. Okay. Here we go. So I'm not, I'm just going to play just a small part where he addresses the killer. And then get into it. Yeah, yeah, see, that's a problem because Miss Ladybug, yeah, it's a combination of the two. It's a combination of the eyewitness and the bridge guy. So it is hard to forget about the first sketch for sure. Okay. So, like I said, I'm just going to play like, like one minute. Because we've seen this. One person. We are also releasing video recovered from Libby's phone. Remember, as of today, two little girls. We also believe this person is from Delphi, 40, but might appear younger than his true age. directly to the killer who may be in this room. We believe you are hiding in plain sight. <coughs> yeah, I turned it up, Karen. You're welcome. Yep. You never thought we would shift gears to a different investigative strategy, but we have. We likely have interviewed you or someone close to you. We know that this is about power to you. And you want to know what we know. And one day, you will. A question to you. What will those closest to you think of when they find out that you brutally murdered two little girls, two children, only a coward would do such a thing. We are confident that you have told someone what you have done. Or at the very least, they know because of how different you are since the murders. Okay, Donald. We try so hard to understand how a person could do something like this to two, child, to two children. Okay, let me take a look at that. Let's see. Um, so this is what they have now if you go to their thing. So, yeah, so here they got this. Um, you know, they got the tip line. They have, they say, 5 to 6 to 5'10", 180 to 220 pounds, reddish brown hair. Which is interesting. And according to one eyewitness. So keep that in mind. One eyewitness. So that means there's multiple eyewitnesses. And I think that's where you get the two sketches. One of them said the suspect eye color is not blue. So that's that's interesting. So... Um, and thank you guys all so much for tuning in. You guys are amazing. This channel has just been blowing up. Um, boy, how many people do we have in here? 
Oh my goodness, 267. You guys are awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. So, uh, for some of those who are new to my channel, uh, like I said, I'm Chris. I cover cold cases, a little bit of everything. And um, any donations that come in, uh, they go to, I take, um, oops, get that. Take part of the donations, 35%, and they uh, from the Super Chat and Super Stickers, and they go to the Humane Society, because uh, I'm a huge animal lover. So, um, And so far, oops, I just took that away. But yeah, so we're up to um, $82. So we are like, um, once we get, after a couple months, a couple hundred dollars, we'll do like a live show and turn those in. So, um, Oh, thanks so much, George. You're amazing. Thank you so much, buddy. It's awesome. I didn't even get the notification. I think you guys broke my stream. You guys, there's so many people in here. You guys are awesome. Thank you, George, so much, buddy. Oh, there it goes off. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, I think we're about at $100, so that's awesome. Uh, Susan says, I wonder that earlier question, the guy named Paul, can't remember his last name. Uh, oops. A few weeks later, he committed. Oh, yeah. Um, I know what you're talking about. I forget his name. I've been doing some research on some other things, and I kind of forgot all the parties involved. So, okay, let me show what um, somebody mentioned about the clear uh, where they clear up uh, the confusion on the two sketches. Hopefully I can play this because uh, right now my internet's not the best, so I apologize, guys. Um, research the woman walking her dog report is eye color in. Okay. So it's been a while since I've been on this. Yes, my stuff's loading up slow here. Um. If I don't find it in here, I might I might go back over there. I'm going to actually make a video on the whole eyewitness stuff. So maybe I might just save that for the video. Um, I appreciate I forget um, who pointed this out, but oh, let me. Uh, uh, cause yeah, I don't want to take up too much time. Um, yeah, because I think that would be a good video to make anyway. It's just to do a whole video on the two sketches so i will do that um i forget who pointed that out thank you i will i will probably play that video and um i think that would be a really good video to, to make just to clear up the two sketches talk about the eyewitnesses i know it's it's confusing and stuff so we'll, we'll definitely do that for sure so let's um before it gets, uh because we've been going on for a little over an hour so let's take a look at this here. So I've got um, about 12 photos that I could find. Yeah, and I want to go over uh, geocaching. Yeah, I'm going to do a video about that too, Tax Cut. Because the girls were into geocaching, um, which is very interesting. There could be somebody that was signed into geocaching. I don't know geocaching that well, so I need to do some research about it. But the girls were into geocaching. It's kind of where someone plants something. You go onto a site and then you go and like hunt for it. So, which is kind of cool. So here's the first sketch. Uh, so we're gonna go. Um, so this is the someone asked me which person I showed. Um, so this is the background that I had on my thumbnail. But I I don't think this guy. Um, I don't think any of these guys look suspicious. Kelsey said she knows BG voice. Yeah. Um, April, I've got um, other ways you could donate. Um, let me put those in real quick here, and we'll get into it. Um, what's this one channel? Join. So I've got Venmo. If you have Venmo, let me just place that up there. I think that link works. I hope that link works. That link should work. So if you got Venmo, you want to donate. Um, and that's my join channel. I do have Cash App, but that's in the description. So, um, okay, let's go back to the photos here. So I don't think there's anybody in this one. So here's a big photo. 
this is kind of the same photo, but it's like zoomed back. So there's a lot of people there. Um, so you can't really make up much of this guy. Um, can't really see this guy at all. Um, oh, I got so many reporters standing right here. I don't think he's going to be behind a camera. I think he's going to be back here somewhere. So, and these are all reporters. Don't think he'd be up in the front. You know, he could be up in the back somewhere if he did come to us. I got some more pictures here. There's one guy that kind of like stuck out to me. I'm like, hmm, he looks interesting. So this is from the other side. So really, this has just got all these same reporters. I don't think it would be one of these people because they're all kind of reporters. So let's get into... Okay, yeah, so this guy looks familiar, or familiar, looks a little um, sus. Let me, I think I got a better picture. So here's a little bit better picture of some people. Um, so let's, let's go with the front here. So no, 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 no. No, maybe. He's kind of got reddish hair. Huh? I know a lot of these people are probably family members, so we got to be respectful. Maybe. Uh, yeah, he's kind of got a full beard here. Don't think so. Uh, going to the back. You know, you'd kind of think maybe he'd hang back. This guy looks a little sus. No. Uh, if you guys see something, let me know. There's one photo, though. Um, I have the next idea. I can pressure the sketch. I'm going to post in a while. Okay. Um. Uh, Go over this way a little bit. Men in suits, yeah. Cameraman. This would be, like, I mean, that guy could be him right there, you know. Got the hat, kind of sus, standing in the back, you know. You never know about him. Um, I think these are law enforcement, but, you know, he looks like he's got reddish hair here. So, um... It's the same photo. So here's that yellow guy. So it's the same one. Um, this guy here. Yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah. He's. Yeah. He does kind of put that bio. He, he, orange shirt, bald dude. It's orange shirt, bald dude. Um, this guy or in the last picture. Let me go back. Okay, so this is the orange shirt bald dude here. Is that, is that who you're talking about? That guy? Oh, not that guy. This guy here? What's up, Mike? Echo? Yeah, happy Valentine's to all the ladies. Um, what about the guy in the black shirt against the wall by himself? Yeah, this... Uh, Talking about this guy here? Yeah. I think this guy looks, because you get, yeah. Oh, I had it right. Yeah, so this guy here, yeah. Yeah, he's kind of blending in here, huh? So, the guy on your right with his hand in front of his face, in back, in front of his face. I'm not sure if it's this pic you're talking about. Oh, right here. Oh, him. Ooh. It looks like he's got reddish hair, don't he? Reddish brown hair, huh? Got the got the full thing going on. Interesting. You think he's watching from? Uh more than likely. They, apparently, they took down the names of people. So these this is kind of the back view people. I said we'll go with just a couple of more here. So let's see. It's, it's the people in the back that make me wonder. So, no, 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 no. Too tall. Maybe. These are, uh, I forget their names. No, I think these are some of like the family members or close to the family members. He looks a little sus, huh? <laughs> Kenny Rogers, yeah. So. Does anyone know where P.B. Brown is in that room? 
I am not sure. Okay, here's a here's another photo here. I say I got a couple more. Like I said, I, I just thought it'd be interesting just to kind of take a look. You know, we're just kind of scoping out. So no, 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 no. Maybe this guy. Ooh, what do you think right here? Kind of, kind of fit the bill a little bit, huh? I hope that's not somebody's family member, but that that guy right there. Oh my goodness, he's got the jacket, got his hands in his pocket. What do you think? I mean, this is just this is just for entertainment, you know. Yeah, I know they all do look sus. I mean, he looks just as bad as sus as the other guy. But oh, what do you think? That is interesting. Too big? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that. I just thought it'd be kind of interesting to kind of just look. Just, just wouldn't hurt. I, I've never seen anybody else do it, so I thought it wouldn't hurt to just take a look. Um, yeah, I think this is uh, one of the property owners or something. I know this guy. I forget his name now. Yeah. Um, can't really tell what's going on here. Suit, no. Officer, no. 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 This guy looks a little sus here. Just kind of way he's like, mm. um, I don't think he'd probably be up where these family members are, but it's the orange shirt guy, I think. I can't tell because he's got the hat on here. And I think that's, is that Derek? I can't tell. Might be Libby German's dad. So anyway, orange guy, shirt, stance guy. Do you know who he is? Yeah. Any of them wearing dad jeans? You guys like the dad jeans. That's funny. Uh, let's see. Do I got any more? I think I got like two more. Um, that don't really show anything. Okay, one more. I think this is the last one here. So this guy looks pretty tall. I don't think so. No. No. So you'd think if he did come, he'd be kind of in the back here, you know, hanging out. No, no, no. I've seen these people. There's that guy. He looks a little sus right there. There's that guy again that I was talking about. Um, I think he looks a little sus right there. They all got dad jeans on. Yeah, they do, don't they? So, anyway, I thought it'd be interesting. Yeah, there's that guy. I don't know. I can't get a good photo. i got to find a clip. But I, this guy, I wish I could figure out who this guy is because he really, for me, kind of fits the bill. So. There's... Oh, doesn't that look like, is that creepy or what? I don't know why. This guy, to me, is sus right here. But he don't really have reddish brown hair, though. So, but orange shirt underneath. Yeah, yeah, the guy with the orange shirt, I agree. He kind of seems like he's kind of best bet, huh? So, let's see. Did I go over everything I was going to go over? Um, like I said, it kind of. I usually don't like to go more than an hour and a half just because I'd like to for be able to people to come back and check out um, the video. So what I've got going on, I've got Paranormal Tuesday coming tomorrow. I've got the story of Kaylin Louder um, that I'm doing because that's here in Utah. And that's like a, it's, um, a case where a, a woman was found in the water and it was her death was ruled as an accidental death but their parents think that foul play was involved and so there's like a 911 call there's footage of her running out of a apartment complex for the last time and it just it's really sus so i'm going to do her story um tonight i will go over the brian laundry stuff i may go live tonight we'll have to see so I think that's the plans for this week or for the early part of this week. So, 
Yeah, I'll I'll, look, I'll go back and look at some of your guys' comments because I know some of you guys are probably just because there's kind of a time gap between the live and me, so you guys might be pointing out stuff and I've already kind of passed it. So I'll kind of look go back and look at it. But you know we got to be respectful because most of those people are just you know family members and stuff. So. Mystery Christie, maybe VG isn't that large of a man. He could have just stuffed his jacket with stuff. Good, Yeah, very good. Streamer, what video games do you play? Other side, the one with the ball cap. Looking forward. Okay, I'll, I'll go back, Shannon. I'll go look at it for sure. Um, so... I think that'll do it, guys. Um, Chris, did you ever cover the missing two girls in Panama? Um, no, Robert. Why don't you um, send me a link? I I don't know if I'll have time to cover the story, but are they currently missing? I can show them in my next upcoming video. So, Robert, if you can, because sometimes I just can't. I just uh, I get so many requests sometimes, you know. It's weird because like all of a sudden I won't get any requests, and then like everybody like sends me in stuff. So yeah, if you can, Robert, my email. I will actually hear me. I got my email up. Um, yeah, let me put my email real quick here for you guys. And if anybody's got any family members missing, or know somebody that needs some uh, exposure. Just send me an email with the details and a picture, and uh, I'll be more than happy to post that in my next video. So I think that'll do it for now. I might go live tonight, but I will definitely have the Brian Laundry Report video coming out and the video for the witness sketches and stuff to clear up the kind of the confusion. So, yeah, Cindy, I agree. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jill. You guys are awesome. So, yep, jeans rolled up. Yeah, I'll take a look at it. So, I would love for you to cover the Chris Kemmers. Oh, from the Panama. Oh, were they murdered? Oh, okay. I'll see what I can do. No promises, VK, because I just, <clears throat> there's just a lot. Um, but I'll see what I can do if I can make some time. So, yeah, Springfield 3. Yeah, I'm very familiar with Springfield 3. That, that is an interesting story. So, so yeah, guys, if you guys can hit the like button uh, before you guys leave, I would appreciate it. Uh, happy Valentine's again to the ladies. Thank you guys so much for the donations. And I will probably see you guys tonight. So thank you guys so much. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. Love you guys.